Yay Networks. And I have a complaint. What's your complaint, Shane? In our last episode of Junkyard Mayhem, we posed a question to the audience. Who would you prefer bring us in and out of each segment? Me uh-huh. or yeah. you? Okay. And an overwhelming number of people said you. I don't think that's true. I, I, I'm the one that reads the comments. I feel like you're lying. Is that true? Why don't you go ahead and bring us in today's episode? <laughs> Give everyone what they want, apparently. I'll just go sit outside. Let me know when the podcast is over. I think you are better at bringing us into the podcast, and I think you are especially better at bringing us out. I do enjoy your antics. The people have spoken. Well, welcome to Junkyard Mayhem, episode 11. We are in LA. We're in Los Angeles. So if you're watching this and not just listening, you can see that we are not in our home podcast studio. This is our LA studio. No big deal. (laughs) Um, This LA studio doesn't have window blinds, so you might see some very aggressive lighting as we progress through our episodes. Yeah, might want to switch to like audio only for the next... (laughs) Put it on black and white. Couple (laughs) All right, well, today we have a very fun episode for you. We have a segment for you that will probably end in our divorce. I'm excited about it. We are going to be doing a debate. Yep. We've picked out three divisive questions. Hannah is a master debater, which is a word that you have to say very carefully. (laughs) Okay, Shane. (laughs) And I am not. And we're going to put those two skill levels to... The test. One of us did debate in high school. It was not me. <laughs> Before we get into that segment, um, because that's going to be a fight. It's going to be a, a negative experience um, <laughs> for you and us. So before we do that, we have a fun, excited, well, not excited, silly, very gentle mayhem story from very early on in our relationship when Hannah and I were the biggest cheese balls that two people can be. Yeah, this is going to make us feel loving toward each other so that we can hopefully survive the next segment. Yeah, remember the good in our relationship. Yeah, so Shane, when was this? This was like 2016? Time is an enigma. I think you say that every time I bring up a date. Time is a vague, murky, unknowable. It's not actually. This was in the summer of 2016. I think it was in August since I actually have a specific well, memory for notes about these events like this. And we, I was visiting Shane in Pennsylvania. This is when we were long distance. Yeah. And this was, this was like the third visit. This was in August, 2016. This was my third visit to Pennsylvania. And I had this idea that <laughs> like when you had a boyfriend, maybe, <laughs> maybe you would go to build a bear and get <laughs> like a couple's stuffed animal. Wait, you had this idea like, this was a part of you? Yeah. Like, before you met me, this was a thing? Like, this was just like a thing that I, I guess I just thought maybe this was something that you might do. And Hannah was dropping these hints, <laughs> you know, throughout the early months of our relationship. Like, wouldn't it be cute if we went and made like a, a couple's bear? And I, I like what? had never stepped real into a Build-A-Bear <laughs> in my life because I was a 25-year-old mm-hmm. uh, human being at the time. And in my defense, you were 23. I was 20. 20. Yeah, again. But I was 20. Isn't that a little bit sad? I wasn't like 14. I was 20. But this is also the time in our relationship when we were beginning to realize, like, okay, this is, like, real. Yeah. Like, this is love, love. And all of these goodbyes, because we were long distance, and Hannah would visit, or I would visit, and then we'd have to, like, say goodbye for a month, or two months, or three months. Yeah. They were really getting hard. And it was miserable whenever we weren't in person together. So on this visit, we were like, you know what? Maybe that bear would be a cute, like, thing for Hannah to have yeah. to remember me yeah. when we're not together. Exactly. I had one of your sweatshirts that miraculously fit me. It was a small sweatshirt, but it fit me. Uh, and I wanted something else. So I wanted to build a bear. And finally, on this third visit, we decided to go to build a bear. It was a mistake. I'm going to just say that right up front. I still have the build a bear. It wasn't a mistake, but it was not the experience that I thought it might be. It wasn't a dreamy, romantic yeah. boyfriend takes girlfriend into build a bear and makes her bear. Mm-hmm. No. So we go to the mall. I'm really, really excited. We're walking through. I remember we stopped and got 
like iced tea at a little iced tea stand. I was excited about that. We had like our cute outfits on. <laughs> we were gonna like do this build a bed and like go to dinner. I know. Walking through the mall, Hannah's arm is draped around my shoulders. <laughs> we're stopping every like four feet to kiss. Uh huh. It's disgusting. We're really excited. So we go to Build a Bear. We saunter into Build a Bear. And I don't know if I was mistaken and couples don't normally go to Build a Bear. Like maybe I was just wrong. I honestly have no idea. Or oh. was it my wheelchair? Or was it the fact that the Build a Bear employee who happened to be working that day was confused about the nature of our relationship? To give you a sense of what Hannah means by that, when we entered Build-A-Bear, I saw three or four different employees gasp, <laughs> rush over, <laughs> and say that was like, oh my goodness, he's here for a bear, isn't he? <laughs> this is his trip. You know, they saw my wheelchair and instantly were like, oh boy, this is it. Yeah. This is the moment we've been waiting for. We are going to make a little... Disabled boys' dreams mm-hmm. come true. This might be his make a wish. We don't know. <laughs> this could be it. And what transpired was like a version of hypothetical freeze. <laughs> the game we play where we make up hypothetical ridiculous situations, but played out in real life. It's like the employees were playing hypothetical freaks in person. <laughs> so in Build a Bear, you get paired up with an employee who kind of walks you through the whole ordeal. Yeah. Because it is an ordeal. And she comes over, and the first thing she does is kind of look at Hannah and determine that Hannah is my mother, <laughs> or my caregiver, my caretaker, my attendant. And <laughs> says to Hannah something like, all right, what are we going to be making for him today? <laughs> Instantly we're like, oh, no, 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 like... We're making it bear together. And she's like, oh, that's okay. <laughs> so cute. Are you guys friends? Yeah. Are, you know, brother and sister? What are you? And we were like, no. I think she actually said, are you guys brother and sister? She asked something. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to remember. And we were like, no, no, no. We're, this is my girlfriend. This is my boyfriend. Yeah. Her jaw hit the floor. Mm-hmm. This experience just became... A holy experience. But I feel like from that point on, she was a little bit standoffish. I don't know if she thought she was being pranked. Like, in my memory, she was not really that, like, involved after that. Do you remember that? I feel like she was just kind of like, oh, okay. She was very unsettled. Unsettled. Watching on eggshells. Yeah. Um, But we had to, like, pick out the bear we wanted. Yeah. And Hannah and I's... Hannah and my, Hannah and I. Yeah, my. Our behavior, you know, in regards to, like, making this bear was kind of tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. Like, we made fun of every bear option that was available. Hannah would, like... Or at least you did. Oh, I did. Hannah would, like, hold up an alligator and be like, should I do this? And I would make a joke. And what I realized was that this woman probably didn't understand... That we were just kidding around with each other. Mm. And it instead looked like <laughs> I, as the boyfriend, was like, we're going to make you a bear. And then ridiculed <laughs> every decision that Hannah made about this bear. <laughs> oh, no, you're right. Do you remember when I put my voice inside the bear? So I didn't want any add-ons because they're very expensive. I wanted a naked bear. <laughs> That's the other thing. Hannah kept denying <laughs> all the cute stuff that you can add. True. So she was like, just give me the plain bear, please. And the woman was like, are you guys having fun? Yeah, I guess people <laughs> normally, I did not want to spend money on an outfit. So I was like, I want the bear and I want nothing else. Like nothing. And Shane insisted at one point on putting his voice inside the bear, which I was very much against because I was like, well, then it might accidentally go off while I'm like snuggling the bear and then it's going to terrify me. But Shane was like, no, no, no. This is the only special part. Like, this is my choice. We're like fighting in front of this woman. (laughs) I'm like, I don't want it. (laughs) And he's like, well, you're going to have it. (laughs) And so I like to do this. I wanted to record a little voice memo that Hannah wouldn't know what it said (laughs) until later on. So I had the employee help me. That was a romantic experience in and of itself because she had to hold the little microphone to my mouth and I'm doing like sultry whispering, like, hey, babe, 
I'm going to miss you so much. You I said, hey, you. babe, I miss you very much, and I'll see you very soon. I looked up. The woman is sobbing, just <laughs> absolutely falling apart. This is now the cutest thing she has ever seen. She's still <laughs> baffled. She's sobbing but confused. You had to retake it like four or five times, too, because you didn't know it was such a short. Like, you, you kept going over. She was like, oh, you poor thing. And I'll just say, when you play that voice memo, the echoing sounds of the people in the mall all around Shane, because I think they went out into the mall to do it, it's just, it is not a nice thing to listen to. So we made this gnarly, stripped down <laughs> naked bear. We named it something ridiculous. We're not going to say what the name was, but it was embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, Fringy and Rose. And then they brought it over on a birth certificate. Yep, and they were like, they had to still be excited and like, you know, pretending this is adorable, even though they are mortified by what we were doing in their store. Uh, they bring over our certificate and like pronounce our baby boy, uh, you know, alive and here's your bear. Uh, please get out of our store. You're scaring the other customers. Um, this is a store for children. Yeah. Did you enjoy the bear building experience? Not really. Do I you, didn't really. Do you want to tell them where your bear is today? Because I know where it is. It's actually, it's in our bedroom. Is it? Yeah, I, I moved it. It was in a box in the basement. It was in a box for like three years. Shane got mad because he, the other day remembered when we were talking about this, he remembered that we made that bear and he was like, wait a second, where is it? And I was like, oh, I don't think I ever unpacked it when we moved. So it was in a box for a year, but I went and got it from the basement and now I have it in our bedroom. And I will say for the months or the years that we were long distance, you did have that bear by your side. Yeah. More often than maybe you should It was in my dorm room. (laughs) I loved my bear. It served its purpose. I think that I should start a business where I can go with strangers to build a bear as their fake boyfriend if they want a really magical build a bear experience. It it kind of throws it off. I don't think anyone wants that experience. It uses everyone. It really does. So that was our build a bear story. Very romantic, very weird, very jet air mayhem. <laughs> we should go back. I think they have build a bear in LA. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Let's do that every build a bear in LA. I want to go to the original one that we went to the first time. And I want to be like, you know what? We're married now. <laughs> we they, weren't kidding around. They, well, it, um, it's probably not the same place. It's probably but, not. All right, everyone. We're going to take a trip break and then we're going to come back with a much less happy. Oh, boy. We're going to fight. We're going to mm-hmm. have a little debate. We have all done that thing where you discover a new symptom that your body is having, and you end up going online and stumbling down a terrifying TikTok rabbit hole of questionable advice from so-called experts. Like the other week, I found this like mole on my belly that I'm not entirely convinced has always been there. And so obviously, I went right online to try to figure out what this might be. And the answers are horrifying. I'm not convinced that You know, I only have a few days left. There are better ways to get the answers that you want and the care that you deserve from trusted professionals and not random people on the internet. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care that you need and deliver the type of experience that you want. You know, since we're spending a few months out here in LA, I just realized like, we don't have doctors or any medical care out here. Yeah. So this could be really helpful if we need to, you know, get something figured out medically. Yeah. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Surprise twists and mayhem might work for podcasts, but maybe not for medical care. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. You can choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. Go to ZocDoc.com junkyard and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash junkyard. ZocDoc dot com slash junkyard. All right. It is time for Junkyard Demolition. Whoa. That's a good name. It's a good name, but it doesn't really reflect what we're about to be doing, except for demolishing each other's well-being. <laughs> we are about to debate yes, in we front are. of you 
in real time. Anna and I argue often. It's one of our favorite things to do in our relationship. I wouldn't say argue. We like debate. Debate, yeah. You know. And I was going to say, it's never in a mean, nasty way. Yeah. But we're very opinionated people. Mm-hmm. And we often enjoy... Discussions. Discussions. Seated, <laughs> seated discussions where we are trying to prove the other wrong and put holes in their ideas and dreams. I hope I don't actually get mad at you. I hope you do that with me for a great I episode. know. I think I probably, I, it's going to, I'm going to get mad at you because there's no way I won't. So we randomly selected three starter debate topics mm-hmm. out of a list of a hundred so that we wouldn't know what they were. So we didn't like prepare. <laughs> Hannah has them now. We have three of them, and I don't really know how debates were. Maybe you can well, tell us since you were in debate in high school. So there's like an affirmative side, a negative side. Okay. Which I guess we'll just sort of decide which we want. <laughs> Hopefully we fall on different sides of the issue. I know. <laughs> um, and then we would do our opening statements. Okay. Then we would do rebuttals to rebut each other's opening statements. Yeah, going to rebut the hell out of you. There's, you know, cross questioning where we can ask questions to each other. I don't know how this isn't going to stay structured, though. Do I need a lawyer? <laughs> like, it's just a laughable idea that we are going to be like, and now your turn. I, I'm. Do you don't have your timer? I don't have my Two timer. I'm hot. All right, let's get into it. First All question. Right. The first question is. Oh, also, the audience, you are the judge. So for each one, award a point. And whoever gets the more points out of three. Out of three. You know, leave it comment who won each round. All right. Round one. Ding, ding, ding. Round one. The thing is, people are just going to vote for the side they agree with. You know, whoever, that's what I would do. Whoever argues their side better. Okay. But these are just kind of like opinions. Happiness is more important than success. <laughs> this is perfectly suited for us. Hannah, go ahead and give your opening statement. We don't even need to discuss which side we're on. It's so obvious. So I'm on the affirmative side of this. Shane, I believe that happiness is more important than success. And I know (laughs) in the very core of my being that you are incorrect. Rules have already been broken. Success, ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) is more important than happiness. Okay. The thing is- today I stand before you, (laughs) a humble man, a broken man- a successful man, and a happy man. And I know without a shadow of a doubt. Is this how the bits were? <laughs> no, without, not I think at all. It's whoever is more like assertive okay. and dominant. So I guess I'll just become assertive and dominant. The thing is, you want success because but you're assuming that that will bring you happiness, correct? I think that it's kind of a kill two birds with one stone type of situation. Success be debt. No. Happiness. That's where you're wrong. That's where you're wrong, and your own life proves it. You are forever Whoa. dissatisfied. Dropping personal bombs. Dropping personal bombs. Shane, if you had looked at where we are right now five years ago, seven years ago when we met, you would have your mind blown. Every goal that you ever set for yourself, you reached. And yet now, you are no more happy than you were seven years ago. I disagree. You were just as happy seven years ago as you are now. But yes, I'm seven years happier because my success <sighs> has carried me no. and my set point of happiness nope. throughout the years. Yeah, your set point of happiness changes, though. Because of my success. It, that's what I'm saying. You can get more and more successful, but you're not getting more and more happy. And let me ask you a very simple question. What makes you happy? That's like family, doing things that you love, being comfortable, a certain amount of money and, you know, amenities. Right. But at a certain point, you're not getting more happy. Are you going to get psychological on me here? It's not psychological. It's just like, look at your own life. That's why I'm putting it in terms of you, because I feel like that should be easy for you to understand. Like, do you think I'm happier than I was seven years ago? Yes. Oh my God. Shane, we were so happy seven years ago. We're just as happy now. We don't have to build a bear as often. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but I genuinely do. Like, I prioritize success to a default. Probably. Over, oh, no, not to a, you mean to a, to a fault. To a fault, to a default. Uh, 
It is your default also. This is why I'm not a good debater because I just spit words <laughs> out and they don't make sense. <laughs> the judges let me don't know what your argument was. And you do put success over happiness. Because I genuinely believe, like, I think that happiness is the pinhole of him is it, is it? Oh, look, so he just, just he just stepped in I it. I might have just reversed my own opinion. He just stepped in but it. I, believe, I win. Ding, ding, ding. I believe that success is a means to an end for the happiness. Like if I just sat around all day, you know, twiddling my thumbs and humming my favorite songs and eating my favorite foods and watching my favorite movies, all things that like bring me happiness, that might last for a day, two days, but I need that that internal drive, that that climbing the mountain, achieving things. My pro- like I'm I'm the kind of person that would just be happy doing the movies and the sitting around twiddling my thumbs endlessly. <laughs> That's However, what she does most days. But I'm just saying, like you you say you want that internal drive, but you never ever reach it. So I don't see how that's satisfying. It's about, it's the journey. Yeah. It's the people you meet along the way. That's tiring to me. And now you're just using cliches. <laughs> so I declare myself the winner. Shane said that the pinnacle of humanity is happiness. So I think that that means happiness is more important than success. But we are... Also, what even is success? Happiness is at least like, we have a sense of that. What's success? Success is self-defined, which is why anyone can be successful. Hmm. That's good. 10 points for shame. Oh my God. No, you don't, you don't get to go back on saying happiness is the pinnacle. All right. So I took that round. Let's <sighs> move on to round number two. All right. Question number two. Oh, wait. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> go ahead. This isn't a boxing ring. I don't know why we're doing ding, ding, ding. <laughs> not yet. It's not. It is better to be kind than to be truthful. Ooh. These are existential. Yeah, they are. What list did you read from? I think that we also fall on different sides. I don't like existential questions. I would have preferred to debate like a scientific question. Maybe. Well, that's pretty easy though. Okay. No, there are some that would work. <laughs> <laughs> let's Can't debate, think of any right let's now. Let's debate whether or not scientific <laughs> topics would be. <laughs> All right. I believe that it is more important to be kind than truthful. Okay. I think that interpersonal relationships and the well-being and comfort of others is paramount in human interaction. That makes sense. And I think that anyone that lives otherwise is a monster of a human being. That kind of tone is not accepted in debate. You would be kicked right out. (laughs) I will say, I don't really know where I actually fall down on this. I'll take the other side because I think that's obviously the point of this. You hear that, judges? She doesn't even feel a conviction. That's not, the, that's not the point of debate. You don't need to feel conviction. You're assigned randomly when you're doing debate. It's not about what you feel. It's about, actually, we should be arguing the opposite sides. That would allow you to stretch your argumentative muscles. I just, I don't want to stretch anything. Okay. I hate stretching. I want to <clears throat> tell you what I believe. So I believe it is more important to be truthful than to be kind. And I I am I am not capable of being kind in a non-truthful way. So that kind of works for me. Uh, if I don't like someone or what someone said, there is no like putting on a smile and, you know. She doesn't fake it very well. Being friendly. I don't fake it very well. Uh, <laughs> so I don't really have a choice in where I fall on this matter anyway. But I do think that it's more important to be truthful than to be kind. I know that your interpersonal relationships thing, you think – being kind is more important. So Shane, when you are talking to someone, you would prefer that they lie to you and say something that they perceive as kind versus tell you the truth. Mm-hmm. If you ask them, is, is what I wrote good? You would prefer that someone lie to you versus be truthful. If they can lie really well so that I believe it. Really? You wouldn't want the truth? <laughs> no. <laughs> God, I hate this game. <laughs> I'm I'm coming down on the same side as Hannah. I think a time. lot of you know people like it's you want to be kind to someone, but you want to receive the truth. So I don't think it would be fair to be like it's more important to be kind to people. But I hope people are truthful to me. Like every single day when we are getting ready for the day, Hannah shoves her armpit. Oh my god! Into my face. This is not true. And says, "Do I smell?" This is once a week. <laughs> I do do that the like fact once a week. It is this is my favorite. Every once ever. in a while, you gotta check, and you can't. I can't tell. And I guess if I am untruthful 
and I lie and I say, No, you no, don't you smell wonderful. You smell like roses. <laughs> You're the most beautiful smelling person I've ever met. When in reality, it's like a junkyard Shane. in that armpit. That, <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's a bad thing. I would be doing you a disservice. So you're just arguing my side. Also, I like how I picked like your writing and you picked that my armpit smells like a junkyard. So rude. I'm using real examples from our lives. Okay, so I win that round again because you just switched sides and argued my side. This is why I did the debate in high school. Oh my god. I like writing where you can think through your thoughts mm. rather than having to come up with them off the top of your head. All right, ding, ding, ding. I win. Round three, scientists should develop a way for everyone to live forever. Oh now that's kind goodness. of a scientific one. It has scientists in the title. Science. <laughs> Scientists should develop. A Scientists way. should develop a way for everyone to live forever. Do you I, have, do you, what's your opinion? I'm a strong no. You're a strong no. Yeah. Ooh, I think I'm a yes. Okay. I have a problem with like eternity. Yeah. This is gonna get dark. I know you have a problem with eternity, but <laughs> you ever lay awake at night and just stare at the ceiling and wonder or realize that like you're gonna die? Yeah, I think you're, so. You're not gonna live forever. I don't realize it every night. I know it. <laughs> it's not so much of a realization as it is just a regular <laughs> thought. Just, but, you know, I heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the idea when you're a kid of like everyone living forever is a, a great one. I love that. However, when you actually think about it, like we cannot mentally wrap our heads around forever. Like I, when you say that you think that scientists should, I'm like, I don't think you're really grasping forever forever when i think of forever i see you okay and if that were true like that would raise a whole host of issues first of all like would everyone just have access to this because i highly doubt it based on how we structure our society oh there would be a disparity i don't know if you'd be given the treatment <laughs> second <laughs> second what would happen about like having kids would people just not be allowed to have kids anymore if you chose it because you can't just fill up the earth with immortals forever. Interesting point. So it raises all sorts of ethical issues that I don't think are worth it. Practicality is aside. Oh uh, well, <laughs> no, no. Let's not put those aside. Dismissing and ignoring everything you just said. <laughs> I think the you know the the key no. I think that the single biggest driver for any of us in life is our own mortality. Yeah. Um, and how incredible would it be if we weren't all constantly somewhere deep down fighting against this understanding that our time here is limited. But I don't think, I think what you're saying the first time makes more sense. Like it's the biggest driver behind everyone or at least it should be, I, I think if we lived forever, we would kind of lose all purpose. Like, what would you even do then? That's There'd be true. no point to anything. You're right. Because you would eventually do everything. And <laughs> another, then you... another debate tactic. Say, you're right. <laughs> to your opponent. <laughs> Try it out, kids. <laughs> you know, like, I think life extension 100%, but I do think, like, there there should be an end because otherwise, like, you know, forever is forever. That's uh, true. If there's no end, then... You are eventually running out of everything in the universe, and then you will still have forever to just but you implode should, in your own brain. You should eat at every restaurant a oh. thousand million times over. But eventually the earth is probably going to die. You know, where are we going to go Before that then? happens, you can eat at every <laughs> restaurant. You just you want an live, extra, like, ten years. <laughs> you can live long enough to see mind-blowing inventions. Uh-huh. You know, maybe we figure out how to build other planets. But other generations can do that. You just want that all for yourself. Yeah, and this is a very selfish okay. opinion. But yeah, I want to be around when they invent 6G cell phones. So do you want... And not 7G very cell Very limited. Do you want <laughs> to live forever or do you want to live for a thousand years? I want to live forever and then... Some. No, you do not. I don't believe you. You're just saying that for the debate. Do you maintain like your your current physical state or is a 999,000 year old I know like much different kind of person than a 30 year old well I have no idea if you maintain like if I maintain my 30 year old personhood you're just frozen like a vampire well 
frozen in time. Yeah. Then, yeah, I want to... And if everyone around me... No, I don't want to live forever. I think you're right. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. The But the fact that we die is the biggest motivator in my life. Yeah. On some level. On an unspoken yeah. level. Wow. And without it, there's really no urgency. There's When there's nothing without it, there's nothing. Not even urgency in, like, professional yeah. worlds, but, like, in love, you know? Yeah. Why, wow. Why get married? Why find a partner when... You should do that in 300,000 years. Exactly. Yeah. You know? All wow. right. So I win all three rounds. You just have to let Shane keep talking. He'll eventually talk himself out of it. I don't know. No, I think I won because okay. growth <laughs> is more important than arguing correctly. Than conviction. Of course. So nope. I'll just flop to all of your sides and I'll call that winning. <laughs> All right, that was our first debate segment, Junkyard Demolition. I don't like debating you. I think we should do this every week. (laughs) (laughs) All right, we'll be right back with a fun game called Hypothetical Freaks. (laughs) All right, we are back from our break. We are ready for Hypothetical Freaks, and this is a special edition. We are really scared. Shane, do you know what is happening in three days? I got an email today. It's in three days. I don't know if I'm ready. It's in three days. Why don't you tell them? We are taking our first ever cruise. Oh my God. I'm terrified. You know how easily I get motion sick? Very, very easily. She gets motion sick like in the driver's seat of a car. <sighs> Most people, you have to be like in the back yeah. and like reading or something. If anyone drives me at all, I can't. So I. If you lean over the wrong way, you get motion sick. <laughs> like you get out of bed and you're like, oh man. <laughs> she was helping me use the bathroom like two days that's ago. That's not motion sick. That's not. That's just lightheaded. Well, it's, they're it's, all it feels it feels intertwined. I think that your lightheadedness is going to come into play <laughs> when you're motion sick. So I have like four different kinds of medication. I have patches. I have the wristbands. I'm hopefully well prepared and hopefully this the seas are steady. But we're kind of a little bit nervous about yeah. going on this cruise, our first one ever. Yeah. Um, is Hannah going to be throwing up the whole time? Am I going to have to fend for myself? <sighs> Will I get to taft in the boat? Uh, lots of questions as we enter it. So we're going to play... Hypothetical freaks, and I think we should begin by addressing how to handle it if you are extremely <laughs> ill. And I think, because of what we're paying for this cruise, <laughs> that we need to just deal with it and partake in every <laughs> activity out there, no matter how green in the face you are. Wow. If we have to go to dinner with a few baggies in your pocket <laughs> and you have to empty yourself, a oh few my God. times at the table. You know what? This is being made all the worse and people don't know because we are going with friends. <laughs> we are going with Cole and Charisma from their YouTube channel. You might know them. And so this is happening while we are, what, face-to-face with them at the dinner table? Yes. I just hold up my <laughs> my napkin and throw up behind it. No napkin. You hold the bag <laughs> up to your face and you stare them straight <laughs> in the eye and you puke and you keep a smile on your face. Because <laughs> we will have fun on this cruise no matter what. What I sincerely believe, and this isn't even hypothetical freaks at this point, if I am motion sick, I do believe that if I am in water, I think I will feel better because I have been in an ocean and I do not feel motion sick in an ocean. I did get sick once when I was scuba diving. So like maybe this isn't true, but I'm hoping that if I get in the pool on the boat and it's like 60 degrees right now, so I'm not sure if the pool is even going to be in use. But if I float all day long, I might be able to make it through the cruise. Is this a hypothetical freight thing? Yeah. I think you probably... Me floating all day... I mean, it's it's my true solution, A, but B, it makes a good hypothetical freaks because the image of me alone in the pool Just floating on my up. back <laughs> for... for I'm going to have to ask them to keep the pool open overnight. So that I can survive is that's, a good one. That's the hypothetical freak scenario. Mm-hmm. You go into like the nurse's office <laughs> to request a you know pass to be in the pool overnight because mm-hmm. you need to be floating. An accommodation. Speaking of the nurse's office, you're probably going to end up there. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. There's going to be some time spent on a dirty <laughs> in this ship. And I think that I should bring the Disney cast into your room to make you feel better. I'm going to go find Mickey. 
out in the ship. He's going to see me yeah. in my wheelchair and lose his mind. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, Mickey, I, I cannot believe that this is you. I'm so excited <laughs> and I need your help. And he's going to be like, oh, hey. I don't know. <laughs> they don't I don't talk. Know. Mickey doesn't talk. Mickey has a very high pitched voice. Mickey doesn't talk. In some movies, he does. I know. I'm saying does when he? you meet know. Mickey, he's not going to be speaking to you. I'm going to say, Mickey, take my hand, and I'm going to lead him through the tour ship. He's going to say, where are we going? I'm going to say, no, he isn't. There's someone I want you to meet. I'm going to bring him into your nurse's <laughs> station room. I'm going to ask him to lie down with you and cuddle wow. you because I'm going to tell him she's not able to lift me into bed, so yeah. I can't cuddle her. Mickey, I need you. That's nice. That's thoughtful of you. I'm going to wander the halls of her ship at night, singing M-I-C-K-E-R-M-O-U-S-E. It'd be funnier if you were singing like the Titanic theme song. <laughs> I'm going to wander around the two ship. Just going, so no icebergs, right? None. There's none <laughs> in this. Are you sure? We should just wear life vests the whole time just to be safe. <laughs> Wouldn't want to risk it. I'm gonna tell strangers that I'm like, what's the word for like terrified of water? Hydrophobic. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> hydrophobic. <laughs> and this is my worst nightmare. But you're convinced that this is how I'm gonna get over my fear. Yeah. Well, I think that almost wraps up hy- hypothetical freaks. I have one more scenario for you, Shane. I'm feeling better. This is a true one. Shane cannot get off the boat at the one stop where we have one stop on our cruise and he can't get off neither can yeah neither can cole uh you can't get off in a wheelchair and so i just feel like that scenario that situation of everyone else getting off the boat there's a lot there's a lot that's gonna yeah (laughs) so we're well aware that we can't get off and we could just stay on the boat and like enjoy the The empty boat with no people there which is what we will do in real life but in hypothetical freaks land (laughs) i'm going to sit at the exit, <laughs> watch everyone get off and then stay there. <laughs> oh. And the employees are going to be like picking up the, you know, closing the gate and like cleaning up. And I'm going to just sit and whimper. I'm not going to cry, but I'll whimper. And everyone's pulling away in their uh, little tender boats. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> and then when they get back on, ask every single person what they did. <laughs> what was it like? <laughs> And then the employee eventually is going to come over and be like, hey, are you okay? Like, what, are, what are you doing? And I'm going to say, my dream was to see Mexico. <laughs> my one dream. That would get us something. <laughs> <They will. laughs> you might be given a free cupcake at that point. <laughs> That's really my goal in all of this. Yeah. Make the employees feel so bad that they give me cupcakes. <laughs> well... I feel much better. Yeah, I do too. I'm hoping I don't get seasick. Oh, but we'll see. Lord, if she does, we're gonna have <sighs> actual jet nerve mayhem to report. Yeah, next time. I don't do well when I'm nauseous, so <laughs> we'll see. But I'm excited. All right, everyone, that was jet nerve mayhem episode eleven. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a review on whatever platform you are using. You're doing a great job taking us out. Like us, star us. Yeah. Review us. I uh, and see, I'm getting bored. This is where we wrap it up, nice and quick. Come on, Shane, give us a give us a little tagline. It is a junkyard out there, everyone. Put your life vests on. Oh, because the ocean mm-hmm. is in motion. Oh, that doesn't bode well for me. The ocean is filled with garbage. Oh, which is a sad but true. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick up the litter. Get out into that ocean. Clean it up. <laughs> Bring it to your nearest junkyard. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs>